At the start of this new year, I am filled with hope for what is to come, and I'm thankful for what has passed. I hope and pray we all have a new year filled with joy, love, and happiness. Good morning, and welcome to Newburgh Centerville Pastoral Charge. Reverend Barbara Millhood is on holidays this week. I'm Connie Hart, and Ralph Paul and I volunteered to take the service this morning. Jerry McGrath is playing his guitar and singing the songs, and Bill and Ken are videotaping, and Bill and Val and Emma will put this on YouTube. Thanks to everybody for participating. We are here at Centerville Church today, and I want to say thanks to Frida and Marion for the beautiful decorating they did before Christmas. Thank you. Our announcements are um, just that next week, the service will be either virtual or in church. We're not sure. We will let you know during the week what is happening. The only birthday this week is John Shatler on January the 5th, so happy birthday. Call to worship this morning. We gather to once again receive the announcement of Jesus' birth. To ponder the wonder of Jesus as Mary did when she held her child. To glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw a love light in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was a special kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits. Caring for strangers and friends alike. Instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he met everyone. His love was so profound that even from the very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. We've been singing along with the chorus of angels ever since. Glory, hallelujah, Christ is born. Let us pray. O oh God, Christmas may be over, but the celebration of all that Jesus means for us has just begun. Over 2,000 years ago, hope, peace, joy, and love came to light in the birth of the Christ child. By the fire of Jesus' spirits, hearts like ours have been warmed ever since. And still today, we pray that love burns strong within us, such that friends and strangers find comfort and warmth by its glow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Each year we sing Christmas carols, and we don't know the meaning or the history behind them. This morning, we are reading scriptures from Isaiah and learning the story for a few of the Christmas songs we sing. The prophet Isaiah gave a lot of good knowledge to the people of Israel to make sure that they stayed loving God throughout their entire lives. So I'm reading from Isaiah 35, verse 1 to 10. The desert will rejoice and flowers will bloom in the wastelands. The desert will sing and shout for joy. It will be as beautiful as the Lebanon mountains and as fertile as the fields of Carmel and Sharon. Everyone will see the Lord's splendor, see his greatness and power. Give strength to hands that are tired and to knees that tremble with weakness. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong, and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue, coming to punish your enemies. The blind will be able to see and the deaf will hear. The lame will leap and dance and those who cannot speak will shout for joy. Streams of water will flow through the desert. The burning sand will become a lake and dry land will be filled with springs. Where jackals used to live, marsh grass and weeds will grow. There will be a highway there called the Road to Holiness. No sinner will ever travel that road. No fool will mislead those who follow it. No lions will be there. No fierce animals will pass that way. 
Those whom the Lord has rescued will travel home by that road. They will reach Jerusalem with gladness, singing and shouting for joy. They will be happy forever, forever free from sorrow and grief. In 1865, the famous preacher and abolitionist Philip Brooks rode on horseback from Jerusalem to Bethlehem and participated in the Church of the Nativity's Christmas Eve celebration. In response to his experience there, he wrote the now famous carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, which was first performed by a children's choir of his church a few years later. Unlike many Christmas carols, the lyrics of this reflective and hopeful song are set in the present tense rather than the past. Present-day Bethlehem and surrounding regions are filled with violence and despair, but the people are resilient and have hope. O little town of Bethlehem. I would like to talk to the children for a few minutes about New Year's resolutions. I'm not sure if you make New Year's resolutions, but they are a promise to do something differently in the new year. You might promise to obey your parents better or get along with your brother or sister or a friend better. If, uh, adults, they like to promise to exercise more or eat more healthy food food and less junk food. The origin of making New Year's resolutions started with the Babylonians who made promises to God in hopes that they would earn good favor in the coming year. Let's make promises to God this year to attend church more, to 
pray more, to read our Bible or Bible stories more. Become closer to God and see how it makes you feel. It will help us be a better person. Now a reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down. But just as new branches sprout from the stump, so a new king will arise from among David's descendants. The Spirit of the Lord will give him wisdom and the knowledge and skill to rule his people. He will know the Lord's will and honor him and find pleasure in obeying him. He will not judge by appearance or hearsay. He will judge the poor fairly and defend the rights of the helpless. At his command, the people will be punished and evil persons will die. He will rule his people with justice and integrity. Wolves and sheep will live together in peace and leopards will lie down with young goats. Calves and lion cubs will feed together, and little children will take care of them. Cows and bears will eat together, and their calves and cubs will lie down in peace. Lions will eat straw as cattle do. Even a baby will not be harmed if it plays near a poisonous snake. On Zion, God's sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. The land will be as full as knowledge of the Lord as the seas are full of water. Good King Wenceslas was written in 1853 by John Mason Neal. It is about a man who braves the winter storms during St. Stephen's Day, which was December the 26th, to help his poorer neighbors. The story is based on a real person, Wenceslas I, Duke of Bohemia, who was assassinated by his own brother and had been adored by his subjects. His charity and popularity eventually led to his being named the patron saint of the Czech Republic. Good King Wenceslas. Mark my 
may the words of my mouth and the meditation that takes place in each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Amen. The past year has been an exciting one, but it has also been trying and difficult at times. While we can't know what is coming in the new year, we can find hope in God's word and has to have a positive outlook that things will be better in the coming year. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation that takes place in our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. The past year has been an exciting one, but it has also been trying and difficult at times. While we can't know what is coming in the new year, we can find hope in God's word and have a positive outlook that things will be better in the coming year. Bad times always pass, and what awaits us will be better. It's easy to be held back by what happened yesterday, but we should look forward to the future we want. Each year is a new opportunity to grow closer to God. We come to face a new year, and many of us look back at our pet peeves and faults, and we don't want to leave them behind. Yet we must if we are to have a happy new year. Let's forget our past sins. They are in the past, and God has promised to forgive us if we are his children. At times, we have disappointed those we love. Forget the past and reach for better things. We should forget our failures. We do not need to take the pain, grief, and sorrow into a new year. Life always has storms and losses, but we need not take the memory with us. These are part of life's journey. Strive for new achievements. We should leave behind in the old year all of our bad habits. New Year's Day is a good time to make a fresh start and break the bad habits we have accumulated. Going into a new year does not mean leaving everything behind. There are many things we should take with us. We want to take love for others. We must take love if we are to be happy and have joy. We want success this year, but not at the expense of others. We must take with us gratitude to God for his many blessings to us. Gratitude to our friends and family for their patience with us. Gratitude for life and health. And gratitude for the opportunity to start a new year with the promise of good things to come. We want to take our accomplishments with us. We should be proud of ourselves, but remember to continue to work forward toward achieving new successes. We must also take appreciation for families and friends for the kindness they have shown us. Let us show our appreciation more in the future. We must appreciate the beauty around us, the world we live in, the beauty of a newborn baby, mountains, sunsets, nature, and our church. We must take plans for service to God and others. We can volunteer our time and help at church, our neighbors, people in need, and seniors. We want to take peace in our hearts the world is in a state of unrest and turmoil. That as Christians, we can walk calmly, knowing that God is walking with us into the unknown of the coming year. I found a poem, it's called The Journey, and it's by J.T. Boulding. As I began my pilgrimage into this brand new year, what shall I take along with me? that I some heart may cheer, not greed for gain, nor doubts, nor fears, nor vanity, nor pride, not grudges, quarrels, hate, or tears, 
but love and peace to guide. I shall delight to take the Lord throughout each day with me and try to show his wondrous love with everyone I see. I'll share the joy Christ gives to me and face life with a smile. I'll try my best like him to be and serve for him each mile. God has a plan for us. We need not dwell on the past. Don't worry about the future. God is with us. He has a plan and will do new things in our lives. He is our strength and we have nothing to fear. Find contentment in God this year and give thanks for all that he has done for us and what he will do for us in the year to come. Amen. Reading from uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in the land of shadows, but now light is shining on them. You have given them great joy, Lord. You have made them happy. They rejoice in what you have done, as people rejoice when they harvest grain or when they divide captured wealth. For you have broken the yoke that burdened them and the rod that beat their shoulders. You have defeated the nation and oppressed and exploited your people, just as you defeated the army of the Midian long ago. The boots of the invading army and all their bloodstained clothing will be destroyed by fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as like King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice. From now until the end of time, the Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. Written by Massachusetts Unitarian Minister Edmund Sears, the care it came upon the midnight clear carries a much deeper meaning than simply retelling the birth of Jesus. Sears hoped to offer an uplifting message amid the great poverty he had was witness to, and to remind people that God, in the form of a child, had entered a world sorely in need of love and peace. A movie was made in 1992 at Midnight Clear which tells the story of American and German soldiers laying aside their weapons on Christmas Eve of 1944. The story ends tragically as miscommunication causes hostilities to resume. Yet the powerful third verse of this carol says to hush the noise of battle in order to hear God's love song to the earth and all people. It came upon a midnight clear.
In 1816, Father Joseph Moore wrote the poem Still Natch, Helig Natch, which stayed, was stationed at a pilgrim church in Mirafar, Austria. Two years later, now at St. Nicholas Church in Oberdorf, he asked Franz Gruber to set the poem for guitar and choir, which the two performed on Christmas Eve, 1818. Since then, a legend has grown about the circumstances of this collaboration, beginning with a broken organ in St. Nicholas and ending with a dramatic last-minute musical setting for the now familiar carol, Silent Night. To what extent the legend of this carol's origin is true is perhaps less important than the beauty and simplicity. Silent Night. Be happy. God has given us a new year to celebrate and a happy new year to each and every one of you.